Okay, so this is going to be an integration problem using trigonometric substitution and completing the square. It's going to be similar to problem number 936 for my book, 1001 Calculus Problems for Dummies, which you can buy on my website, patrickjmt.com, if you want to see some extra examples. So, all right, so at first glance, I would say, you know, to me this looks like a partial fractions problem just because I see this rational function. And x squared plus 4x plus 1 will certainly factor. It's not going to factor quote-unquote nicely with, with uh, nice whole numbers, but you could use the quadratic formula, find roots, uh, and go about it that way, but not necessary. I'm going to do it a slightly different way. So, Okay, so we've got this x squared plus 4x plus 1 in the denominator. It's also worth pointing out that um, you know, if this was an irreducible quadratic in the denominator, if it didn't factor, you would want to use this technique for sure. So, uh, probably worth pointing that out. Because if you just did, uh, tried to do a partial fractions decomposition, you would just see that it doesn't really get you anywhere. Okay, but again, to reiterate, this one does factor. You could use partial fractions. I'm going to use completing the square. Okay, so we've got x squared plus 4x plus 4. So I'm just going to give myself a little room here. Okay, so recall to do completing the square, we take the coefficient on the term involving x. We take one half of that coefficient. So we take one half of the number 4. That's going to give us 2. If we take 2, whatever the number is that we get, we square it. So 2 squared is going to be positive 4. And we insert that number right back in there. Well, okay, if we undid the parentheses, obviously I wouldn't have the same expression because I would have x squared plus 4x plus 5. But to keep it as the same equivalent expression, we can just subtract 4. We added 4, well, we'll subtract 4. Okay, so x squared plus 4x plus 4, that factors as x plus 2 times x plus 2. Well, I'm going to write that as x plus 2 squared. Plus 1 minus 4, that's going to give us negative 3. Okay, so now I'm integrating dx divided by x plus 2 quantity squared minus 3. So recall if you have a quadratic expression of the form x squared minus a squared. When we're using trigonometric substitution, we use the trig substitution. We use x equals a times secant theta. And again, the point of this is, if, if you do have a square root, it's going to give you a perfect square and you get rid of the square root. Again, we don't have that in this case, but the idea is eventually we're going to be able to use a trig identity and things are going to factor out rather nicely. Okay, so in this case, though, we've got x plus 2 quantity squared minus, I'm going to write that as the square root of 3, squared. So in this case, the identity that we're going to use is, well, instead of just x on the left side, we're going to have x plus 2. And in this case, our a value is going to be the square root of 3. So we'll have x plus 2 equals the square root of 3 times secant theta. That's going to be our substitution. And if we calculate the differential, we'll get dx equals the square root of 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Let me move everything here a little bit here real quick. Okay, so we're now going to put these two, we're going to use these two expressions in our integral. So okay, so in the numerator our dx is going to be the square root of 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. And in the denominator, our x plus 2, we said, well, that's going to be the square root of 3 secant theta. And that's all being squared. And then we have our minus 3 left over. Okay, so now it's just a matter of simplifying this expression. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything in the numerator. Square root of 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Okay, in the denominator, the square root of 3 squared will be 3 We'll have secant squared minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and factor that. That's secant squared theta minus 1. So just going to do two steps at once. Uh, again, because you'd have 3 secant squared minus 3. So I'm just factoring the 3 out of there. A 
and let's just keep going here. So I'm going to pull out this constant. We've got a square root of 3 over 3. I'm going to factor that out front. We've got secant theta, tangent theta in the numerator. There's our d theta. Now the point is, right, of using all this, uh, this uh, trig substitution in the first place is eventually we get something where we can use a trig identity. So secant squared theta minus 1, that's going to be tangent squared theta. So that's what's going to go in the denominator. Well, now we can just keep simplifying. We've got the square root of 3 over 3. Well, we've got a tangent factor on top. We have tangent squared in the denominator. That'll leave us with secant theta over tangent theta. And again, we can keep simplifying here. So we have secant theta over tangent theta. Well, tangent, um, let's write both of these. Secant of theta, that's just 1 over cosine theta. Tangent of theta, well, that's sine theta over cosine theta. Well, if you flip and multiply, um, we would have 1 over cosine theta multiplied by cosine theta over sine theta. That's going to leave us with 1 over sine theta. And well, 1 over sine theta, that's just cosecant of theta. Okay, so if we simplify our expression in the integrand, secant theta over tangent theta, that's just going to give us cosecant of theta. This is one of those uh, functions that you just, I would say, want to have the antiderivative formula memorized for, the antiderivative of cosecant theta. And recall that this one, the, the antiderivative, is the natural logarithm of cosecant theta minus cotangent theta, d theta. And at this point, we're almost done. Oops, I put my d theta in there. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, we found the antiderivative, so that d theta is gone, plus c. Okay, so the natural logarithm of cosecant theta minus cotangent theta plus c. I'm going to rewrite that again just because it drives me crazy looking at that. Okay, and at this point, it's just a matter of going back to our original substitution and finding uh, expressions for cosecant of theta and cotangent of theta. Okay, so our original substitution was x plus 2 equals the square root of 3 times secant theta. That was the substitution we used to kind of get the, the ball rolling here. So I can write that as x plus 2 divided by the square root of 3 equals secant theta. And now all I'm going to do is just make a right triangle for this. So there's theta. I always have to remember. So, um, so I have to do, what is it, Sokotoa. So cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant of theta, well, that's just 1 over cosine. So that's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So the length of the hypotenuse will be x plus 2. The adjacent side will be the square root of 3. And now if we want to find uh, the missing side of the triangle, again, we can use Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of 3 squared plus the missing side squared, that's going to be x plus 2 quantity squared. Well, we know that x plus 2 squared, that's x squared plus 4x plus 4. The square root of 3 squared is going to be um, 3, so we'll subtract that from both sides. And when we take the square root, we'll get the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 1, which, hey, was exactly the, um, you know, uh, the, almost the exact expression that we started with in the denominator, right? It just has a square root underneath of it now. So our missing side is the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 1. Sorry that I'm trying to mush everything in there. But I think now we're in a position to read everything off. So let's see. We've got the square root of 3 over 3. We've got the natural logarithm. Well, cosecant of theta, let's see, cosecant of theta, that's 1 over sine. So sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So here we're going to get the hypotenuse over the opposite side. So again, cosecant of theta is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite side, that ratio. 
So the hypotenuse is x plus 2. The opposite side is the square root of x squared plus 4x plus 1. Minus cotangent of theta. Well, tangent is the opposite to the adjacent. Cotangent of theta is going to be the adjacent to the opposite. So the adjacent here, we're going to have just the square root of 3. And then the opposite side, again, we have this square root of x squared plus 4x plus 1. All of that plus c. And if you wanted to, I'm going to be lazy here since I've ran out of room. You could obviously write this, uh, the expression, inside of the absolute value. You could write that as a single fraction. You know, if I was definitely taking a quiz or a test, I, I would do that. I would clean it up. But um, otherwise, that's all there is to it. Um, just using a little bit of completing the square. And after that, you know, it's just, again, these alternate into these trigonometric integral problems where you still have to use identities to simplify. Make your right triangle. Uh, but other than that, hopefully it's relatively straightforward. Definitely takes a couple steps, but hopefully nothing, nothing too crazy.